Robots are now fighting wars. In Ukraine, ground robots armed with rifles and grenade launchers are being deployed against Russian forces. These aren't experimental prototypes sitting in labs. These machines are being used in real combat, on real front lines. Ukrainian soldiers are sending them into high-risk zones where no human wants to go, and they're fighting back. The model catching everyone's attention is the D2112R, a small but heavily armed ground robot developed in Ukraine. Fitted with grenade launchers or automatic weapons, it drives directly toward enemy positions and opens fire, remotely operated by Ukrainian forces stationed safely behind cover. In the field, it's saving lives by doing the most dangerous tasks. In one instance, a robot was filmed engaging in combat while under fire, its operators watching via a mounted camera and returning fire with the press of a button. These robots are part of a new strategy. Replace human soldiers in high-risk operations. Use unmanned machines to push forward and do it fast because the battlefield is changing. But Ukraine isn't alone. The United States is also investing heavily in military robotics. One company stands out, Ghost Robotics. They build Vision 60, a quadrupedal robot designed to walk like a dog, but built for military use. Unlike Boston Dynamics' friendly-looking spot, Ghost Robotics' version is all business. In late 2023, they revealed a version of the robot fitted with a spur rifle, a 6.5mm Creedmoor sniper system mounted on its back. That robot can aim, stabilize, and fire on targets, all while walking across rugged terrain. Ghost Robotics has contracts with the U.S. military and defense contractors for base security, perimeter patrol, and battlefield support. Their robots can operate in rain, snow, mud, and sand. They can carry payloads, communicate over secure lines, and be fitted with surveillance or weapon systems. Meanwhile, Boston Dynamics, probably the most well-known robotics company in the world, has taken a very different approach. They've built similar four-legged robots, including Spot and the Humanoid Atlas. But they've publicly pledged never to arm their robots. In fact, Boston Dynamics, along with other major robotics firms, signed an open letter opposing the weaponization of general-purpose robots. Despite that, the military demand continues to grow. So other companies are stepping up. In China, state-backed researchers have developed their own quadruped robots with rifles mounted on top. Some were shown being dropped out of helicopters during drills, walking across terrain and taking firing positions. The videos look like science fiction, but they're being used in real military exercises. In Russia, developers are working on autonomous combat ground vehicles as part of their future soldier program. One of their units, the Marker UGV, combines AI, drone tech, and combat systems. Though less publicized than its Western counterparts, Russian military robotics is evolving fast behind closed doors. Even smaller nations are now building war machines. In India, the DRDO, Defense Research and Development Organization, is working on a humanoid military robot. With 24 degrees of freedom, it can map surroundings, open doors, climb stairs, and handle explosives. It's built for search, rescue, and high-risk battlefield support. Indian defense officials believe this robot could be active in real missions by 2027. It's being developed at the Pune-based R&DE lab, which specializes in combat engineering. In France, a massive program called DROID was just launched. It's a multi-year initiative under France's Ministry of Armed Forces, aimed at building a wide range of unmanned ground vehicles for the military. French defense giants KNDS, Safran, and Arquis are all involved. They're designing machines that can carry equipment, scout dangerous terrain, or directly assist soldiers in combat. The United Kingdom is testing a robot called Weevil, a plow-like machine designed to detect and clear landmines. Developed in partnership with Pearson Engineering, Weevil attaches to armored vehicles and clears explosive traps from a safe distance. With minefields still killing soldiers and civilians in active war zones, Weevil could become one of the most life-saving robots in modern military use. The company Milrem Robotics, based in Estonia, is also making headlines. Their robot, Themis, is a tracked ground vehicle already used by more than 15 countries. Themis can carry machine guns, missile launchers, or surveillance systems. It's built for open battlefields, able to transport heavy equipment or serve as a mobile weapons platform. Ukraine has already received multiple Themis units to assist in logistics and patrols near the front lines. All of these developments are happening at the same time. 
Right now, the battlefield is shifting from humans on the ground to machines on wheels, legs, and tracks. These robots are fast, precise, and tireless. They don't panic, they don't need sleep, and some of them can even make decisions. That's the next frontier. Some of these military robots are already powered by AI systems that help them navigate, recognize patterns, and avoid obstacles. But new research is taking that even further into the realm of autonomous decision-making. The question is no longer just, can this robot move and shoot? Now it's, can this robot decide who to shoot? It's a dangerous path. If a machine is trained on battlefield data and given the ability to act without human orders, what happens when it makes the wrong call? This question is at the heart of growing international concern. The United Nations has held multiple discussions about banning fully autonomous weapons. Human rights groups have called them killer robots and warned that they remove accountability from the chain of command. If a robot fires at civilians, who do you blame? The soldier who deployed it? The engineer who coded it? The government that funded it? Right now, there's no clear answer. In China, a recent test of Unitree's H1 humanoid robot went seriously wrong. During a demonstration in May, the robot suddenly snapped, flinging its arms and legs wildly, dragging its support structure, and almost striking the engineers handling it. Witnesses said it went berserk. And while nobody was seriously hurt, the footage circulated widely, reigniting fears about safety. The malfunction was later blamed on a coding error, specifically the balance algorithm misreading its crane-suspended tether, causing overcompensation and violent movements. This can also happen with any robot used in military, so it is a serious concern which should be handled very carefully. Most military robots today are still remote-controlled or semi-autonomous, but the line is getting thinner. AI is advancing faster than laws or ethics, and defense companies are racing to stay ahead of their competitors, sometimes with little transparency. That's why Boston Dynamics and others are pushing for regulation. In New York and California, bills have been introduced to ban the sale of armed robots to civilians. But there's nothing stopping militaries from developing and deploying them in war zones. The use of robots in warfare is not theoretical anymore. It's happening now. In Ukraine, robot soldiers are firing weapons. In China, gun-mounted dogs are jumping out of helicopters. In India, humanoid machines are learning how to open doors and carry explosives. In France, Engineers are designing robotic convoys. In the US, robots are already guarding bases. We're entering an era where machines fight alongside humans, or perhaps instead of them. This is the beginning of the automation of war, a quiet revolution that's already underway. And as the technology becomes smarter, faster, and deadlier, we're forced to ask a final question. Who will control the battlefield of the future, humans or the machines they built?